Well, I think if you'd asked me that question two or three weeks ago, I'd have, I would have said yes. But given the comments of the Saudi finance minister yesterday, um, it seems to me that there doesn't appear to be any great hurry for um, Saudi to cut production. And that really begs the question is where is the flaw in oil prices? I think everyone is looking to try and pick the bottom at the moment. And, you know, this is the worst monthly run for oil prices since 2008. We're looking to, we're looking to essentially close lower for the fifth successive month in a row. So that really begs the question is where, where do I see potentially um, uh, OPEC taking measures to actually cut production and that, given those comments last night I don't think we're there yet which suggests to me that unless we fall significantly below $70 a barrel I think the downside pressure will continue to weigh on prices. I think obviously demand and prices are simply, you know, they're weather related and I think it's unlikely that we'll see the type of weather event that we saw last year, the polar vortex, that was exceptional. I think, you know, at the very least the, the upside should be capped around about $5 and, as, and unless there's a significant deterioration in the weather, I think a large part of the rise that we've seen in natural gas prices has already been priced in in terms of the cold weather effect. Yeah, Mr. Draghi is very good at hinting at things and they're, not, and they're not actually delivering them. It's not a given that we're going to see additional bond buying from the ECB, certainly not this side of 2015. We still need to see the effects of the TLTRO programme, um, the second instalment, which is due to be delivered in December. I think until such times as the ECB has been able to assess um, the effects of that particular programme, I think it still remains very unlikely that we'll see further measures from the ECB before the first quarter of next year.